Let us go to the word of God today. Let's manage our time wisely. As we go to the word of God this afternoon. And we are in the book of Genesis chapter 37. Where I'm going to be reading from verses 12 to 36. We are still on the same theme, Jesus, in the Old Testament. But I chose to give today's topic, uh, today's sermon a, a topic Jesus and Joseph. So that's what today's topic. But we are still on the theme of Jesus in the Old Testament. My, my, my objective with this series is to show you how great Jesus is and that we will exalt him to his rightful place. Um, by my estimation, too many in the church have too of a low view of Jesus. And we don't, and we don't understand who he is, that he is God that he is Lord, that he is King, that he is exalted. The Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, he is exalted. Um, um, he, is the, he is the exalted God, the exalted Christ. And so I want to show you that he has been active. His signs and symbols are in the Old Testament and will flow into the New Testament. And so that's the my objective of this series is to show you who Jesus is, and that your praise and your worship may be raised to another level. That your praise, because when you know who you're worshiping, it's easier for you to worship than for me to stand behind the podium and say, say praise the Lord, church. Say hallelujah, church. And then we have to play the music louder. I have to repeat it over and over till you get it and feel it. No, I, I, I don't have the energy. But if I can show you who he is, even when I say nothing to you, you go give him glory. <laughs> You'll be going through the worst period in your life and you're still giving God glory because you know who he is. So I want to show you Jesus. I want to show you Jesus. So let's go. Let's read Genesis 37, um, verse 12 to 36. Hear what he says. Then his brothers, the context, of course, is... Um, the story about Joseph the, um, before he was sold into Egypt. Um, Jacob um, is sending him out to check on his brothers, right? Verse 12 says, Then his brothers went to feed their flock, father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flock. And bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron. And he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him. There he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him saying. What are you seeking? So he said. I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me. Where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said. They have departed from here. For I heard them say. Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers. And found them. In Dothan. Now, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Wow, what brothers these are. Then they said to one another, Look, the dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, Some wild, anim wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass, when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. My, my. This part always get me. After they did what they did to him, they sat down to eat. <laughs> then they lifted their eyes and looked. And there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm and myrrh, and they're on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? 
come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Notice the Ishmaelites. Right? Ishmaelites. And let not, let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. When then, sorry, then Midianite, then Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekel of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes, and he, he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goat, and dipped the tunic in the blood, and they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? Liars. God. People can't we, I mean, can people be evil like this? Wow. Verse 33. And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast had devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his, <laughs> and all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I shall go down into the grave to my son in the morning. Thus his father wept for him. Verse 36. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. We say amen to the word of God. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and God. We praise you and thank you again for another opportunity to look into your word together. Your word is alive, O oh God. And Father, we pray that as we listen to your written word and now as we listen to your spoken word, I pray that you'll speak through your servant, O oh God, to only speak the things you will have me speak. That you'll touch the ears of the hearers, O oh God, that they will hear your voice. Lives will be transformed, your people will be encouraged and strengthened. And may we see Jesus the Christ today, and we will give him glory and praise. Have your way now, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Again, uh, as we continue on our Jesus in the Old Testament theme, and of course today, stop it, Jesus and Joseph. Jesus and Joseph. Now, you and I know that some preaching may sound good and nice at times until something actually goes wrong. Some of the preaching I'm hearing today is only meant for good seasons. Once something goes wrong, all of a sudden it doesn't make sense. So I want to share something with you today that is truthful, that is real, that will help you on your journey no matter what comes your way. So whether you're going through a good season or a bad season, my prayer is that this word is going to help you and strengthen your faith in God. Can the church say amen? amen. I did not understand them then, but I do understand them now. Those theologically profound words of my late grandmother, Blanche, they still ring loud in my ear. She used to say, or she would say, God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. Anyone else grew up hearing those words from the, oh, it wasn't that, not just my granny alone. Your granny spoke those words too. Deep words. Didn't understand them then, but I do now. Because I must confess that God does work in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. If I was going to save the world... I would never have done it the way God did. Never. But then again, it proved that the Lord 
He is God and I am not. I stand in awe and is amazed at the wisdom of God. I am amazed at how God does things and how everything he does comes together. Even when you can't understand a part of what he's doing, when it is done, you have to say that was well done. I stand in awe, amazed. Paul would say it like this in Romans 11. Romans 11 and verse 33. Paul says in the New King James Version, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. You can't figure him out, but he's working majestically in the background sometimes. And sometimes what we see is chaos, but God brings order out of the chaos. While evil intentions are never justified, God from the beginning of time uses evil to accomplish his good. <laughs> A paradox, I know. Uh -uh. You can't fit it together, can't work it out, but this reflects the greatness of God. God has a way of using evil things to bring about his good. That's why I told you before, a, a bad thing can be a good thing if it is a God thing. <laughs> oh my God. In our text, in our text we read, we see the signs and symbol of God at work. His redemption plan in motion. We read from Genesis 37, 12 to 36. Jacob, Jacob was playing favorite with his son, Joseph. He singled him out and separated him from his brothers. Look with me to, ref to refresh your memory of verse 3 and 4. Verse 3 and 4 says, uh, Now Joseph, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers, sorry, yeah, but when his brothers saw that the father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, we, J Jacob didn't do things correctly, and so in any case, he made Joseph favorite, even though God was at work. Joseph didn't, I mean, Jacob rather didn't go about it the right way because now he caused friction. In the family. Be careful parents. Of choosing favorites. Be very careful. Be very careful. Love all the children the same. They are different. But love them. Love them. Love them all. Amen somebody. So Jacob was play, playing favorite. God the father. God the father. Would also single out his son. Jesus. His son at the start of his earthly ministry. In Matthew 3, in Matthew 3 and verse 17, Jesus is about to start his earthly ministry, go on his mission. John is there, just baptized him. The voice, the Bible said, verse 17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So we know Jesus is God's favorite son. And he's his favorite son, so he could have favorite sons and daughters. So what we see is while Jacob may have acted foolishly and selfishly, we see God operating wisely and righteously. Verse 12 and 14 of what text now says. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, here I am. What a obedient young man. If only our children would have would do what we say the first time. Come on, parents, say amen with me. You, you, you spoke to them about the room five times already. And you have to threaten them on the sixth time for them to actually do. But here Joseph is going to be sent out and he says, here I am. The text says, verse 14 says, Then he said to him, 
Jacob said to Joseph, then he said to him, please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flock and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to second. He sent him out and he went. Father, I pray that our children will obey us the first time we spoke. Can a parent say amen? And I hear even upstairs, they're celebrating that part of the sermon right there. Right, so Jacob um, sent Joseph to check on his brothers. The actions of Joseph's brothers warranted supervision. Back at the end of verse 2 of chapter 37, it said, just the end of verse 2, he said, And Joseph brought a bad report to them, to his father. So these boys were prone to do what's bad. But Joseph, a young man of integrity, would report to his father what they were doing. Now, before you jump on Joseph's case, young people say he talked too much or he's a snitch. He was looking out for them. He knew what was right. As a matter of fact, you notice how snitch are. It is not, right, how people, those who don't like snitch. They don't like snitch, but when somebody do something wrong to them, they want to hear from a snitch. You see the hypocrisy? Any person who, who curses and, uh, and don't like snitch, if something goes wrong against them, they would love a snitch at that time. The hypocrisy. So this also again, Joseph is sent out to check on his brothers. Jesus came to earth to check on us. Oh my God. Jesus came to earth to check on his creation because our actions warranted intervention. We were down here messing things up and he showed up to check on what we were doing to bring back news to the Father. The good thing is he's not coming to stitch on us. He wasn't coming to stitch on us. He was coming to actually help us. Because we needed serious help. Anybody needed serious help before Jesus found you? And as a matter of fact, you can testify, he found you and you still need help. Still need help. In Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10 verse 5 to 7, the writer of Hebrews says, talking about Jesus, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, he's, he's quoting from the Psalms, when he came to the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me in burnt offering and sacrifice for sin you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your, to do your will, O God. So Jesus, sent by the Father, took on a body, coming to earth to do the will of God. And the will of God was to rescue us from our sins. I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus came and disrupted my sinful life. I'm glad Jesus came and I was on a path to destruction. Can I get one witness with me? On a path to destruction and somehow God disrupted my path and brought me on the right path. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. But the narrow is the way that leads to life. And only a few. And thank God for the few that he has saved and rescued. So now verse 18 to 20 now says, let's go to verse 18 to 20. Right? Verse 18 to 20 now says, uh, uh, remember um, that Joseph uh, was sent to check on his brothers verse 18 to 20 now said then now when they saw him afar off he's coming to check on them even before he came near them they conspired against him to kill him then they said to one another look the dream is coming come therefore let us kill him and cast him into some pit and we shall say some wild animal while beast have, has devoured him, we shall see what will become of his dreams. Can brothers be this wicked? Can relatives be this evil? My God. Vicious. Joseph's brothers thought his intentions were to hurt them. They plotted to kill him just like they did Jesus. 
He too came not to hurt, but to help. You remember John 3 verse 17? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hmm. When, 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 when this boy says, let, let us kill him there in a plane. You, you understand that these boys had a track record of deception and, 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 and violence and murder. Glance with me back in chapter 34. Look with me in chapter 34, verse 25 and 26. Chapter 34, chapter 34, 25 and 26. The context is this. They had raped their sister, Dinah, and, 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 and these boys were mad. And so the, the men and the group, the, men, the, men, the man who did it and his, 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 his family... They deceive them and, and tell them, so listen, if you circumcise yourself like we are circumcised, we will give our daughters to you and you can give your daughters to us and we'll be one. But it was a deception. And so after the men decided to circumcise themselves, you know, it's going to be painful for a few days. This is where the text picks up verse 25 and 26. Now it came to pass, of, of Genesis 34, now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. And they killed Hamar and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went out. Let's go back to our text. So I wanted to show you that these boys, when they say, when they saw Joseph coming and said, let's kill him, they were playing with words. You and I know the culture that some of us are from. When our parents say, I'm going to kill you, we know what that means. We will be alive in the morning. Half dead, but we'll be alive in the morning. Because of the setting of the culture. It just means, but these boys were not mincing their words. When they say, let's kill him, they intended to actually, literally kill the boy, the younger brother. And we see from experience that they weren't playing with their words. You see, Joseph's words were misunderstood, just like Jesus' words were misunderstood. In chapter 37 of our text, when Joseph shared with them in verse 8 to 11, when, when Joseph shared with them his dream, remember the dreams about the sheaves? Remember that dream, the first dream he had? And he shared with his brothers about the sheaves, how their sheaves were all bowing down to his. And so the response, the response in verse 8 said, and his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? You could almost see them. Yeah, you can just use imagination. Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? Notice what the verse says. So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. And to make things worse, he actually dreamed another dream. Oh my God. And so when the, the, the verse 10 now says, So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his the dream was that the... the, the the, the, the sun and moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to him. Meaning his mother, father, and his brothers were all bowing down to him. Verse, let me jump to verse 10. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in. You see, it was because they misunderstood Joseph's word. That's why they hated him. So when they saw him coming, they said, let's kill him and see what becomes of his dream. Because we're going to kill him and throw him in a pit. And that will be the end of it. It was also because of Jesus' words that the, that, and the claims he made about himself while they hated him. And conspired to kill him. Like Joseph, they thought 
This was Joseph's doing, but they didn't understand it was God's doing. So when Jesus came to earth in the form of a man, they thought this was his doing. They didn't know this was God's doing. And while these boys and even Joseph's father was asking, shall we indeed bow before you? While they misunderstood who Jesus was, they ought to know that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. So they misunderstood Jesus. In Matthew 16, hear what Jesus says. And pay attention to this. Matthew 16 and verse 21. Listen closely to the text. Jesus is on the street, on the, on, on, actually out in Caesarea Philippi with his disciples. And but having a conversation, remember the question, who does men say I am? It's the context is there. And Jesus is sharing with them what the future holds. Hear what it says in verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Don't miss that. Jesus is said, boys, we talk about all this nice thing, but I want you to know what's going to happen to me. And you know how the story goes. They heard the, the, the first part, the killing part, and all the part, but they missed the resurrection part. Because what happens, and it happens to you too, is that you, you stop at the hurting part, you stop at the pain part, but you don't move on to the resurrection part. Because as a child of God, no matter where you are and what you're going through, you will rise again. Oh God of mercy, somebody ought to get that. I know you're hurting now, but your story is not. I say you may be hurting now, but your story is not over. I know it hurts. Anybody hurting right now? Talk to me, somebody. Anybody hurting? But I want to let you know that as a child of God, your story is not over. Don't miss that your resurrection is coming. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get through this by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Right, so, so, so Jesus explained to them and to help them to understand what his ministry was. You see, the will of God for Jesus was for Jesus to die. The will of God was for Jesus to die. Think about that. The will of God was for Jesus to do what? Die. To die. Are you willing for the will of God to be done in your life? Think about it one moment. Are you willing for the will of God to be done in your life? What if you're suffering in the will of God? My God. What if the will of God brings suffering to your life? What if the will of God brings disruption to your life? What if the will of God brings pain to your life? Are you still willing to let the will of God be done in your life? Because I tell you this, no matter what he brings you into or bring you through, you will come through. Oh Lord of mercy, oh Lord of mercy. You, you, you know that if the David said, um, the Lord is my shepherd, as I want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastor he leadeth me beside the still he restored my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil why because you are with me who needs to be reminded today that he is with you I said he's with you crying but he's with you hurting but he's with you in pain but he's with you suffering but he's with you and by the grace of God he will take you through Amen. my God of mercy the will of God the will of God you see our cute idea of Christianity doesn't work you heard me say this over and over our cute Christianity doesn't work. People have got only biblical Christianity work. 
God to stop bringing people into our buildings or have them log on on, 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 on through technology and hype them up and then leave them alone to suffer. We are the armed people with something that's going to strengthen faith in God. So that when Wednesday come and no praise team singing, when Thursday come and no, no nice song, no pastor dancing to entertain you. When all that is gone and you're really facing real trouble, you know you're, you're serving a real God who comes to your rescue in real time. You heard something that caused your faith to build muscle. You heard something that caused your faith to grow fingers so you can grab a hold of God when everything else is shaking. You shall not be moved because you're standing in, oh my God, on the solid rock. You're standing in faith. Oh God. Oh God. So again, this cute Christianity, it doesn't work, sir. It, it doesn't work. You can't do this because of guilt or excitement. You can only do this out of truth. Excitement wears off. And even guilt wears off. But truth remains. And the truth is sometimes God is going to take you through pain. That is the truth. He's going to take you through pain. But the reality is he's going to take you through. Let's jump. Let's go to our text. So the last time they threatened to kill him, they planned to kill him. Let's go to verse 26 to 28. 26 to 28. The Ishmaelites brought, the, bought Joseph. Verse 26 to 26. So Judah said to his brother, what profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? You know what? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brothers listen. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. The conspiracy uttered was to kill the boy. And they were planning to kill him. And it looked like, just by chance, Ishmaelite traders were passing. You know how many people had planned to take you out? But God disrupt their plan, change your mind, and said, for some reason I can't kill you. And they thought it was because they decided, no, 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 you don't understand. Because sometimes people see us and they, they don't know us and they don't know whose we are. The truth be told, if they were fighting us, we'd be dead a long time. But if you pick on me, you're picking on God. And you don't want to pick on God because he's very peculiar about his children. You see, you can always do whatever you want to me. But if you touch my wife, if you touch my chill, I will take you out. And I'm not talking to lunch. I protect my own. And the devil know even where if you ever mess with any one of you who God has given me to live, I, I will take him out. But they don't understand that it's God. So these boys conspired to kill Joseph. And it so happened that Ishmaelite trader is passing just in time. All God. Joseph had no idea the threat he was under. He had no idea how he, how was, go, how he was going to get out of it. But God was working in the unseen. Can I tell somebody that God is working in the unseen? Even though you feel like you're going to die, you shall not die. Not yet. Not until you live to declare the works of the Lord. After that, you're free to die, but not before your time. Not before. You've got a purpose, and God has a plan for your life. And until that plan is fulfilled, you are not permitted to die. When your work is done, I will do your funeral for you, but not before then. So live my brother. 
Oh God. Come on, somebody. I said, live my brother. Live my live my sister. Live. Live. Don't stop stalling your life waiting for. No, 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 no. This is a day. May I use this? This is a day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice. Oh God. And again I say, rejoice. Give her a mic when she come help me. Yes, so, so the, these Ishmaelite traders are coming and the boy said, listen, let, let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not, come, let us not kill him. Let us sell him to them. Let us sell him to this. And, 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 so, and, and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listen to him. So then the, the, the Midian night traders pass, pass by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. They sold him for 20, I did my research, and 20, 20 um, shekels is just the price for a teenage slave. If he's an adult, it costs more. But for a teenage slave, was for 20. And they took money for him. Anybody see the equation? They, the brother sold him. They got money off him. Notice who they sold him to. Ishmaelites. You recognize that name? Ishmaelites from Ishmael. Who was Ishmael? Glad you asked. Um, Abraham's first son. The illegitimate son. The, um, you know, son. The other son that was not supposed to be but you remember how you know how I know you don't do this by running ahead of God I know you don't do that but that's what Abraham did run ahead of God because he was impatient thinking he was getting too old so he had to go help himself and what he helped himself do is to cause more trouble so much so that Ishmael and his descendants become problem for now the promised son Isaac even until today, as I shared with you last week's sermon. So now the descendants of Ishmael were purchasing the descendants of Isaac. People of God, people of God, be very careful about your wrong actions because they can have lasting ramifications. Your wrong actions can have lasting ramifications. Jesus also was betrayed and sold by his brethren, Judas. Betrayed and sold by his brethren. Now, I want to do a contrast real quick of Joseph and Jesus. You can just imagine as they, they, they grabbed Joseph and he realized what they were doing. How he, he said, brothers, what are you guys doing? This is not funny anymore. At first, it may have felt funny. They were just slapping him around. But when they, were, they threw him in the pit, he realized, no, he knew their history. He knew the type of men they were. You can just, you can almost see begging and crying, craw, uh, um, scraping at the, uh, uh, on the walls. Right, guys, don't do this to me. And we see the record of this. We see the record of this in Genesis 42. Genesis 42 and 21. This is later on. It came to life. Later on, after when, when Joseph recognized them when they came to Egypt, this was after Joseph was promoted in Egypt, he's prime minister, they came for food. Remember that? They came for food and Joseph recognized them, but they did not recognize Joseph. But Joseph was putting them to the test to see if their hearts were changed now, if they had matured and changed. So he was treating them harshly in pretense to see what was in them. Don't miss that. He was treating them harshly in pretense to see what was in them. I'm really not, not harsh either. He was just asking questions about their brother and their father and telling them, telling them that they, they need to bring the, 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 the younger brother to be there. And then everything came back to their memory of what they did. You and I know how, how certain things can cause us to think back about what we did. And we start thinking, Sorry. Because all of a sudden, we start to equate what's happening to what we did. 
It's because I did that why this is happening. Come on, be with me. Bear with us. You know. Or sometimes when bad things happen, you're asking God, God, what did I do? What did I do? So let, but let's read, let's read. The brothers are responding you know, to each, to Joseph talking to each other. In Genesis 42, 21, we're looking at, at a contrast between Joseph and Jesus. Genesis 42, verse 21 says, Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us and we would not hear therefore this distress has come upon us so we can see now remember when joseph was pleading with them then they were cold-hearted not moved by any emotion have you ever met a cold person yeah in the mirror right mm -hmm. just cold and heartless Right? Right? And so they're cold and heartless, but now that they have grown, they're maturing, and, 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 and the thoughts and the memories came back, and the guilt has now come to fruition. They said, Oh God. Do you remember when he, he cried out to us and we didn't pay? That's why this is happening to us. But you can't blame Joseph because he did nothing wrong. He was just trying to help, he was crying out. Let's contrast Jesus. Let's go, let's go. Isaiah 50, 53. Look at Isaiah 53 as Isaiah prophesied about Jesus' attitude when he was arrested. When he was being led to the cross. Isaiah 53 verse 7 says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted. But what? Yet what happened? He opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearer is silent, so what happened? He opened not his mouth. You see, Joseph was just a symbol. Jesus was a real deal. Oh my God. Oh my God. He was not backing out of the plan to redeem me. He, was a, he, he knew what was coming to him. And he didn't even open his mouth. He allowed those he, who he created to arrest him. Oh my God. The giver of life was submitting himself to death. Open not his mouth. No complaint. No rejection. I know what I must do. Because there's some sinners up in solid rock who are going to need rescuing. So I got to go to the cross. Oh my God. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Anybody just want to say thank you Jesus right here. Thank you Lord. You didn't back out. Because if you did, I don't know what would have become of me. My God. We must serve the Lord, church. I don't know about you, but we must serve the Lord for what he has done for us. What he went through for us. So much so, when he was in the garden, he thought about it. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But I guarantee you, when he was in the garden. He saw the vision of this place. With you and me in it. Needing redemption. Needing salvation. Needing forgiveness. Needing mercy. Needing grace. And he said not my will. But let thine be done. Because you know he, he spoke in James. Thine be done. Yeah, so that didn't kill him. Let's go. Verse 36 now says, verse 36, verse 36. Let's take this home. Verse 36 now says, Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. And that may sound casual. Keep it, keep it there, keep it there, keep it there. It may sound casual. It may just sound the end of another chapter. But this verse is loaded. This verse is loaded. You see, his brothers could not see it. They could not see it, but their evil actions would position Joseph in the place to fulfill his purpose. Here in Potiphar's house, God was positioning Joseph as, as a springboard to dive into his future. 
they thought they were just selling Joseph to some Midianites. The Midianites thought they were just selling Joseph to some Potiphar. The Potiphar, uh, 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 um, Potiphar thought he was just buying some regular slave. All, all of them had no idea the purpose and the will of God was in motion. Jesus. Don't you just love this God? That even when you don't see him, he's working. I can't see it with my eyes, but I know God is working even, even now. God is working. He's still working. As Brooklyn Tabernacle says, God is working even now. Even though we may not know. Just how God is working. He's still working. God is working even now. Anybody need to hear this? God is working even now. God is working even now. So we see the end of the text and we think the story is over, but the story really has just begun. You see, those who have done wrong can be forgiven through the death of Christ. Those who have done wrong, done you wrong, or you have done wrong, because sometimes we don't understand what God is doing, using even our evil decision, evil intentions to bring about his good. Right? And we see, Joseph, Joseph was so gracious. Let's jump to chapter 50, just real quick. Chapter 50, verse 15 to 21, but I won't read the whole thing. I'll just highlight a few things. Chapter 50, verse 15 to 21. This is way after now, after Jacob is dead. Uh, Joseph, of course, um, his brother knew, knew, knew who he was now. After the father died, no, they thought Joseph was going to take revenge upon them. And so that's this where how chapter 50 ends. Verse 15 says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, jo perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil we did to him. Can you blame them? No. Because now when things turn around, they realize how wrong they were. And so now they're scared. Joseph is in power. And he's going to kill us. He wouldn't do it while our father is alive. But now he's dead. He's going to kill us. They didn't realize that Joseph was a representation of Jesus. The gracious. The merciful. Let's jump down. Let's jump down to verse 19. Joseph said to them. As a matter of fact, they came... They came uh, uh, bowing down before him. They came bowing down before him. Amazingly, amazingly. Remember how they said, are we indeed going to bow before you? Isn't it amazing how God can turn things around? Let's just close this up though. Verse 19. Let me jump to verse 19. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, hear this. As for you, you meant... Talk to me somebody. Oh, it's not there. You meant evil against me but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive now therefore do not be afraid and I will provide for you and your little ones and be comforted and he comforted them and spoke kindly to them what a representation of Jesus are you willing to represent Jesus in this manner like Joseph? Are you willing, even for those who hated you, intended to kill you, now God has positioned you in a place of authority, are you going to stick it to them? Are you going to say, you remember when? You remember when? No, are you? No, 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 no. You can't wait. This is God. This is just God. You know, you can't, you know, not you, you know, people can't, they're in a place of position now and they are in a position to pay back. And they say, yes, this is God. I'm going to let them have it. You have a wicked heart if that's your intention. Because when God found us, we were his enemies and he was gracious to us. So what we see in Joseph is him representing Christ. Oh my God. He understood what God was doing. Do you understand what God is doing in your life and through your life? So those who 
have done wrong, have done the wrong, can receive forgiveness. And you can forgive them with the help of Christ. Romans 5, 8 tells us, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. But God demonstrated his love towards us in that while, while, when? while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. It all made possible because of Jesus. See, when you consider God's elaborate plan of redemption and how it all came together, you have to be in awe. That even there, through Joseph, God was preserving the words he uttered back in Genesis 3.15 about the seed of the woman who was going to come to crush the, the head of the serpent. And God was protecting his people and he was using Joseph to preserve his people. Even, even though evil intentions were used, God used the evil intentions to bring about his good. Now consider your life, people of God, and trust God to work things all together for your good. The God that was at work in Joseph's life to bring about the work of Christ is the same God working in you. And some of you can testify. You can testify. People see your victory. But they have no un idea of the fight. They can see. They don't understand. That you made it this far by the grace of God. So listen to me now. So the, the God who brought you this far by his grace. Is able to bring you all the way. I say to you, church, rise up and live. Rise up and live. As we see this God operating in the Old Testament and we see the signs and symbols of Jesus, may you allow, I pray you'll allow this same God who brought together this elaborate plan to bring his plan together in your life. With all that's happening, with all that's happening in your life right now. And some of you know the story better than I do. What's happening and going on with you. But I want to point you to the God of, of Joseph. The God who is your God. Let his will be done in you. Will you stand to your feet? God is working. He is still working. He's working even now. Yes, he is. In ways and means you may not understand. Through your hurt, through your pain, through your suffering, through your disruption. And truth be told, truth be told, some of the things that are happening to you, it's your fault. But feeling sorry for yourself and beating yourself up is going to change nothing. It's going to change nothing. I drew your attention I think, a few days ago, but let me do it again too. To David. How he messed up big time with Bathsheba. Killed Uriah, her husband. And then marry her. And then the first child, of course, God took the first child. But the second child, Solomon. God blessed him. What he did was wrong. But God turned it around. Because even when David, other sons, wanted to kill him. And to take the throne by force. God said, no, Solomon is the one. But Solomon was born out of, yes. Church, you did what you did. My brother, my sister, you did what you did. Stop beating yourself up about what you did. If you have repented and asked God for forgiveness, allow him to bring some good out of the evil you did. You messed up it. Stop beating up yourself. Stop beating up yourself. Stop beating up yourself. Stop beating up yourself. Look up. Hello. Stop beating up yourself. If you're still practicing sin, you should beat up yourself because sin is going to beat you up. But if you have repented, as a matter of fact, to make sure, why don't you, Lord, forgive me. Come on, somebody. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. 
messed up big time, but please forgive me. The guilt of what I did still remain with me, but I'm asking you to forgive me. Lord, would you do, would you do a reset in my life today? Forgive me, God. Forgive me and help me to move on from what I did. Forgive me by your grace and help me to move beyond this and, and see your good out of my own evil, oh God. You're such a good God. You're such a great God. You're such a merciful God. Do this for me. Like it turns things around for Joseph's brothers. Their intentions were evil. Their intentions were wrong, God. But Father, you use their evil intentions to bring about your purpose. And so Father, I lift up your people this afternoon. Those at the sound of my voice. You see and know where they are. You see and know what they've done. You see the guilt that, that's trying to remain with them still. Father, I pray for your people right here, right now. I pray for a reset in their life. I pray for a reset in their lives. Right here, right now, God. I pray for forgiveness. Forgiveness that they think they don't deserve. I pray for forgiveness. Somebody pray this with me. Lord, I receive the forgiveness. Come on, so come on, come on. Lord, I receive the forgiveness. I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. In Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen